Guys, that's the KO4 Turbo out of my car. If you ever was thinking about upgrading your turbo, fixing the turbo, maintenance in the turbo, or just simply want to know how to take it out, watch this video from beginning to end and you'll find out how. First thing that you want to do to remove the turbo by yourself at home, you want to remove the mass airflow sensor right here. So you're just going to take this and just remove it. So once you remove the mass airflow sensor, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to remove the air intake. I'm not going to go into detail on how to remove the air intake because um, everyone has a different air intake. But ideally, of course, you know, you just get a screwdriver or whatever you need um, need to be a Torx and you remove the air intake. What that's gonna do is allow you more space and get to your next step in taking out the turbo. So guys, the next thing I'm gonna do is remove the heat shield because if you wanna remove, you know, this flange right here or any essential parts, you would need to remove this heat shield. So the heat shield uses roughly a 1040, preferably an alley wrench. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this and as you can see, um, if you look right at the bottom, there's one bolt to the left top that I've already taken out. There's that one bolt right there. Then there's gonna be that one bolt right there. Be careful, make sure you use the right side. I'm showing you numbers to bits, but some mechanics just go standard and use different things. So a lot of times just through heat, these things can be seized. So you don't wanna use the wrong side. So yeah, you're gonna go ahead and use that. So I'm going to remove the heat shield. Once you break it, guys, it's it, you can pretty much roll it out with your finger. Uh, so as you can see, I got that first one out. So now I'm gonna get the second one out. I already broke them, so it should be simple to get out. Like I said, guys, I'm doing these videos to just show everyone, you know, how to do things yourself, how to maintenance your vehicle. I respect all mechanics and people who work on cars for a living. I just like empowering people to know what's going on with their vehicles in case they're ever in a situation where they can't get, go to a mechanic or they don't have one available. They need to get to work, support their family. So by no means am I showing you these videos to exclude mechanics because they need to work too, but just to show you how you can do things yourself. All right, so got the second one out, got those two bolts. So now should be able to remove the heat shield. Simple as that, guys. This dirty heat shield is out of the way. So, got that out the way. And I can let you guys know right now, it's actually time for me to do a valve cover replacement. I'm boosting really, really heavy now. And in addition, it's just, it's just been a while since I've done one. You can start to see sometimes when you look at the crevice in the corners that it's starting to try to, you know, leak through that valve cover. And this is just known in our vehicles for those to go out. But it, when you're pushing heavy boost application, this is just something you have to look after because because eventually you'll have to start kind of leaking or seeping down. So I can already see a little bit of residue as I took off the um, actual heat shield. So sometimes it's good to inspect your car to know what's going on. So that can actually be another video for you guys. I can show you guys how to take off the um, valve cover. All right, guys, next I'm going to use a uh, Allen wrench just to go ahead and remove this flap right here from the actual turbo intake pipe, the one that leads to traditionally to the PCV valve. Um, and, and you don't have to go in this specific order, but I'm just showing you the specific order that I go um, when I'm doing it. Uh, if, if it's too tight and you can't get with it, get it with an Allen wrench, you can use either a 316 um, or you can use a T27. Why I'm saying um, either 316th or T27, depending on who worked on your car, 
uh, uh, you know, generally you're gonna deal with metrics like some T27s and, but you know, at the same time, you can get it off with, you know, standard, depending on what bolts you have in there. So of course you wanna check the size, but yeah, so as you can see, I already broke this one loose um, with the Allen wrench and it's coming out pretty good. So I'm just gonna loosen this one and this one. As you can see it's coming right out. So now I can just do it by hand. What I noticed about Audis, uh, once you break it loose, you generally can do it by hand. So you don't have to squeeze a part in there too much. But as you can see, they're just really, the kind of bolts that just kind of lock in place. And I guess ideally they fit in so fine and there's no play. So when you're putting them in, so it comes out smooth. Generally, when something is hard to come out, that's an issue. So everything should be easy to come out. So as you can see, got my seal right there. I was pushing the oil to my PCV. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that seal off and be good to go in a second. So as you guys can see, this is now loose. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zip tie it up here. That way I can have room to, you know, take off the coolant line, the oil return line, etc. All right, guys, just for a good side note, I always like to just kind of break these bolts first um, just to ensure that I will successfully be able to take off the turbo because you could have a situation where your bolts are seized or broken on and you can't loosen your exhaust manifold and go through all this trouble and run into this roadblock. So me just breaking these bolts lets me know, okay, I will successfully be able to get this job done because um, the biggest part about removing the turbo is removing these bolts from the top five at the top and taking it off of the actual downpipe. So this lets me know I'll be able to successfully um, get it done. So that's just a quick side note, but I'm going to, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna break these. And after I break these, we're gonna go over to the next, um, the next um, thing that you would need to do to take the turbo off. All right guys, so the next step is you wanna remove the O2 sensor. And the reason why you wanna remove the O2 sensor, as you can see, uh, you want, you're want you going to need to be able to get to all of these 15 millimeter uh, bolts. Um, there's going to be one here, one here, and two in the back. And I'll show you guys how to get that in a second. It just gets in the way. So what I have, you can definitely use like a 15 millimeter wrench to get it. But I went ahead and just bought this. And basically what this is, is this is a 7-8 O2 sensor remover. It just has this cut in here. So, you know, you can just kind of put it on here and you can get it out without having to use a wrench. It's just handy if you don't have too much room or you got to break it and it's a pretty tight fit. So yeah, I'm just that's what I'm going to do to get out the O2 sensor. So I just broke it loose and once you break it loose, like I say with Audi, you can just go ahead and twist it out. Let's go ahead and give it a couple twists. You should be good to go. O2 sensor is now out of the car. And just in case anyone wanted to know what this um, brown stuff is, this is my fuel adjective, you know, for octane. So anytime that you, you know, run a, a fuel additive to your vehicle, it's just going to turn the spark plugs and the different things on brown due to the dye in it. So this is nothing to worry about if you've seen this or if you have this in your vehicle. But yeah, there you go. All right, guys, so my next step is gonna to be to remove those bolts right over here on my actual downpipe from the turbo. I know that they're seized because this KO4 turbo is not too old. So it's probably not seized, but in any event, you wanna go ahead and put some liquid wrench on all of the bolts on your vehicle so you won't strip them or so you won't have a hard time getting them off. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray some liquid wrench on all of the bolts um, on the exhaust manifold as well as the actual downpipe and let them soak for a little bit. And that'll just help me be able to successfully take off all, take off all of the um, actual parts or components without running into any issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this. All right guys, so the tools that I'm gonna be using to remove the actual bolts from the downpipe and the turbo, I'm gonna be using this adjustable breaker bar. Um, this comes in handy because I can I don't have to use the traditional pipe or pole. It's not too expensive, it's about $19.99, but it's just a really great tool to have. And I'm gonna be using a 15 millimeter short socket. Um, and the reason why I use short socket, just so it won't be protruding too much to where I can't get to what I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and just 
connect these two and this is what i'm going to be using so i'm going to have the ex extra you know support from this being a longer breaker bar and it should be able to break them loose pretty easy so i'm going to first get the first two bolts that you can guys can see and then after that i'm going to get the hidden bolts and i'll show you how to get those so guys once i use a breaker bar um, at this point i'm just using a wrench it's easy to get to so i'm going to use a wrench for this bolt and this bolt and I um, have, have not broken the, t the other two bolts yet, but I will. And I kind of try my best to show you how to do that. But as you can see right now, um, once I put that C's on there, this thing is um, pretty simple. Yeah, I can use a ratchet, but I'm just taking my time with this. I dropped one of my bits, so yeah. All right, All right guys, so get the one that's going to be over here in this corner. I'm using this guy right here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this in like so and you see how i'm working my way so i'm going to put that in i'm going to turn it and then i'm going to be able to get to that boat and why i'm using this is because down there you don't have down there you don't have that much turning room so even if you put a ratchet in there you don't have room to work with to loosen it up so by doing it from the top you got room to go back and forth from this top area over here so where you can swivel it to where you can unloosen it. So even if you break it, you're not gonna have too much room to unloosen it unless you can get some good strides or it's gonna take you forever. So yeah, so I'm just basically, as you can see, I'm gonna just put this one down there and start, um, break it and start unloosening it. Also, just a quick note guys, uh, for each boat, I needed a different bit. Now, I know some people may have different kind of tools where they don't have to do this, but I'm just kind of showing you. So for this boat right here, which of course is going to be the easiest, I just went ahead and used this. And then there's going to be another boat that's back here. And I use this on that as well. Now, on this boat right here, on this boat now on this boat right here the issue that you have is that if you try to get a ratchet or anything in here it's going to kind of hit that if your ratchet is not um small enough i'm using this 15 millimeter you know socket wrench right here so that um i can be able to slide right on top like so and be able to turn it because when i tried to put the socket on there I wasn't able to get the ratchet because the ratchet kept hitting uh, the down pipe. And then of course, on uh, the back side, like I said before, I'm gonna put a 15 millimeter on that breaker bar and I'll revisit that for you guys. All right. As you guys can see, I got off the infamous boat that goes right there on the back. And look guys, once you take off that boat, look at that. We good to go. The cat is now detached from the turbo. Look at that, guys. Got the hard part out the way. The most challenging part is getting that boat in the back. And let me just remind you guys what I used to get that boat. Basically, use this breaker bar. And I use I use this breaker bar. I use this extension. And I use this right here to give myself the actual um, space that I needed. You know, like I showed you before, I brought that breaker bar through the back right here. And then I went straight that way so I can have room to turn. So I'm good. So, so far, so good. All right. So next step. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove uh, this oil feed line for the actual turbo. Now, it's supposed to use an M12 triple square. However, I'm just gonna use um, this Torx um, T55. Um, it works fine. I mean, as you can see, it fits in perfectly fine. So I'm gonna use that to unloosen, uh, I'm gonna use that to unloosen the spoiler line. So that's gonna be the next step. In case anyone's wondering what all this gunk is right here, it's just from um, the actual spray that I sprayed to get the bolts loose. So, I mean, it's making this job a lifesaver. So just keep that in mind. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this out. Almost there. All right. 
And that's the oil feed line, guys, to the turbo. So you guys can see. So it looks like I got that one loose and ready to go. All right, guys. So the so that cooling thing was a little bit too tight to use the Allen for my car at least. So what I did is I got, um, and then at the same time, I mean, don't want to strip it. So what I did is I went ahead and I got a T55. And then I just kind of, uh, kind of came under. Like this right here. And then I got it from an angle like that. Then I pulled left. So that's how I got to that. So I was able to get it right here and then pull left. So that's going to be a tricky boat to get to. But um, this worked out. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and release this coolant line from this bracket right here. Because if you follow the coolant line, like right here, and you follow it, there's the coolant line right here. I'm just gonna keep following it, keep following it. As you can see, it goes right over here to the top of the turbo. So you have another one of those coolant bolts right there. However, you probably can get this, but it will be very difficult. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna follow this coolant line. You see, you with me? It's right here right here, right here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna use a ratchet to unloosen. And I'm gonna use a ratchet to unloosen that bolt right there. And once I release that bolt, then I can just unclamp it from that. So then this part of the turbo can come out with the turbo. Uh, once you, if you're swapping out a new turbo, you can definitely take it out and, and put it on um, afterwards, but this is the best way to get it out to where you don't have to, you know, to where it doesn't have to be too challenging to get to that boat. All right, guys, so you see down there, I got out that boat and that boat, is what was holding uh, this coolant line. And as you can see, I just basically pulled out this coolant line from right here. This was very hard to get to. I even scratched up my um, oil filter, just trying to move it out the way. Uh, I would definitely recommend you get this. This will work. This is a T30 with a small one fourth ratchet. This is the biggest that you can go to where this is the biggest that you can go to where you can just fit in there to get this part right here. As you can see, nothing else gives you enough space. So you can't use a 3 8 or anything like that. So this is the tool that you want to use in order to get that. But yeah, that was a really tough spot. All right. All right, guys. So just to reference the car, this is going to be my actual pipe that comes from the intercooler to the actual bottom of the turbo. And this is normally where you put your, you know, turbo muffler delete. So um, right now what I'm getting ready to do is I'm getting ready to, you see right over there at the top, you see those two bolts right there? That's where the return line goes. I just sprayed some, um, some of that, um, liquid wrench on there just to kind of get the bolts loose i know there i know i'm going overboard with the liquid wrench but why not spray it and just you know if something is just rusted or hard i just believe in just being proactive so you may see a lot of slippery gunk in here that's just going to be that uh actual um liquid wrench that saves my life and helped me get every bolt out so far so i'm gonna loosen those two and that's going to be the top part of that uh return line that i did previously so i'm gonna go ahead and do that right now all right, guys. Now what I'm going to now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take off um, this um, the tubing that goes to the actual turbo exhaust. The reason I'm going to take that off is it it gives me a little bit more space to play with 
I'll be able to take off the plug from the diverter valve right there and I'll be able to take off the plug from and I'll be able to take off the plug from the actual turbo so I'm just gonna move back up I'm just gonna move this out the way so I can be able to get to those I can get to it now but I'm just gonna this is something you have to move anyway so I might as well move it now that way I can get to the central parts that I need and unplugged both of the plugs um you have one plug like i said that goes to the turbo and one plug that goes to the diverter valve all right guys i have this oil line and it's hard to see it comes like this and it comes this way and right here you see that bolt i'm gonna zoom in so you can see that bolt you see that bolt it's two bolts that you're gonna loosen from right here let me see if I can I'm not even touch it. It's two bolts that you're gonna have to loosen. So that is holding the oil line together. That's holding the oil line in place. So let me just kind of zoom in. So it comes this way and curves that way. So this those two bolts are holding this oil line bracket right there. So you're gonna loosen those two bolts. And they um, I just sprayed a whole bunch of uh liquid wrench i know i'm over with it like i said a million times but um it makes things a lot easier so i'm gonna go ahead and remove those two um bolts right there all right guys so next what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna have to remove this line from the turbo i might have to get like a pick or something you know basically just getting off of this clamp uh this needs to come off and i'm probably just gonna we put a, a traditional clamp on after that these are one-time use um, clamps so i'm going to take this off now as you can see just remove the hose i'm not going to lie man i just manned it off i didn't worry about doing it i just pulled it really hard and manned it off and it came off so now i can just get to this better and put a regular clip on there so yeah that's off now all right next step just a quick fyi as you can see my coolant is leaking out so once you unloosen that um, cooling bolt, the one that's in the corner, um, all of the cooling is gonna leak out of the car. So just make sure you have a bucket or something ready so you can catch all of the coolant and the different fluids that's um, just gonna drip out of the car. And guys, I don't have this bracket um, on mine, it just was never installed, but generally right here, you're gonna have the bracket that connects the turbo to the engine. It's just not essential if you have all of the other components um, in place. But yeah, this is where the bracket would be, and that's what connects the turbo um, to the engine. So you would have to remove a bolt from right here. All right, guys, it looks like I have everything disconnected. Now it's time to go ahead get this extension and that's going to be a 12 a 12 millimeter and i'm going to go ahead and um remember earlier i loosened these bolts so now i'm going to go ahead and just um take these bolts off and hopefully that's all i have left um to pull the turbo out all right guys here's the moment of truth i'm going to see if we can pull this turbo out the car got everything disconnected if you made it to the end of this video i appreciate it all right, let's see, guys. First, I'm going to put this catalytic converter back. Okay. okay, that's not connected. Guys, that's the KO4 Turbo out of my car. This is Bruce Custom Motors. So if you guys ever was wondering how a KO4 look, this is how a KO4 look. And this is how you successfully take a turbo out of your car. Thank you for watching the video. Like, subscribe, share it on all platforms. This is Bruce with Bruce Custom Motors. See you on the next video.